All right, guys, today we're going to be working in the airbox area on this 2013 Chevrolet Avalanche. And so this will cover any of the years and vehicles I put in the uh, vi video description and title. This particular problem is we've got a situation where this cover on the airbox, this boss is broken and cracked here and the hole on the housing is stripped out and the housing hole is also stripped out down here I don't know if you can see it's a little bit dark but basically we only got two of the bolts that are working out of the four they're supposed to secure this guy now normally you'd say well you know maybe what we will do is go to the salvage yard and, and and just replace one that way but you've got an extra complication doing going that route as well and that's the sticker certain states that do emissions testing and I've blanked this out for the privacy of the owner. This is the last eight digits of the VIN are over here and also this barcode and then of course the model year. And on those states, if this sticker's VIN and year don't match what they get when they plug into the DLC under the dash, they plug the computer in, then you fail the test. So we've also got to preserve or replace this sticker as part of this repair. So what you'll get out of this is how to replace the air box, also indirectly how to replace the air filter that's inside, and you'll also get how to deal with this emission sticker. So three for in this video. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a T25, I believe. No, a T20. Sorry about that. We're going to take a T20, and we're going to remove the two screws that do work. And these special screws that come on these. Get this out here, I'll show you. They're not something you can pick up at the hardware store, which is probably how the previous owner damaged this housing. Right, it's a very coarse thread, special kind of bolt that you have to pick up for automotive use. This is not something you go to Home Depot and pick up. This is something you have to use that's an automotive type of bolt for this particular purpose. So we're gonna take that guy out, and then we've got one that's still intact over here as well. And when I get that off, you can see what the problem is with the housing. All right, so we pop this guy off, get the housing out of the way, and you can see right here. So because this boss is broken, right, this bolt just goes straight through. There's nothing for it to grab onto, right? So it's not getting any tension at all. So the next thing we got to do is disconnect this mass airflow sensor take a small pick and we're going to get this little retaining clip out of here. Actually a little flathead I should say. You can use a pick too. just happens to be what I grabbed. And then with that guy out of there we can just give this guy a pinch and pull him off. And then we're going to need an 8 millimeter in order to remove this uh, clamp here. I'm just going to come in here with a hand ratchet and loosen this up. To get that loose enough, then we should be able to come over here and disconnect this little air hose here. All right, and we can take the top off, which is where most of our damage is, right here. And then, of course, we've got the problem with the housing being stripped as well. I'm going to pull this aftermarket air cleaner out of here. And then to get the actual housing out, it's, it's kind of snugged in here into some push pins. So we're just going to kind of give it a, a pull up to pop it out of those pins. Here's one. There's two. One more. She's still holding on down here. There she goes. All right. And what you got here are these little pins here push into these rubber grommets down here. That's what holds her into place. All right. So we're just going to take a moment to clean up down here. Check these. This grommet here. In this case. Right, you can actually see that guy. That's the other one that goes in here. So we're going to clean all this up and I'll show you what we're replacing it with. 
All right, guys, just to show you right out of the service manual for this particular model and year, we can see that procedure we just did on the air cleaner assembly replacement and this housing that we just removed here. Very simple instructions. Pull upward in a jerking manner in order to disengage the air cleaner from the insulators, right? So this is exactly how you remove this guy. I know it looked kind of uh, rough and abusive, but that is actually what you have to do to get this guy out. All right, guys, what we're going to do is we're going to replace this with a brand new genuine GM part. We could have went the salvage yard route, but when I show you what you get with this package, I'll explain why I went this route instead. Regardless with the GM, it's going to be 233-60,000 on the part number for this particular item. And then what you're going to get inside this box is going to be the entire assembly. So the reason I went this route is we'll get a whole new rubber grommet here. We'll get a new foam insulator here, and then we'll get the entire top and bottom cover assembly. And then you'll also get, if we just make our box into a table for a second, you'll also uh, get the filter inside, and I'll show you that. Now you also notice this has got a different kind of fastener on the top. It's got this kind of uh, Phillips slotted head type fastener instead of the Torx bits that came originally. So let me just work these guys off. We'll speed through this. All right, so yeah, these are in there pretty tight, and that's what you want. You want this guy on here pretty snugly. So it'll come with the air cleaner as well, or the air filter, rather. And what we want to want to do is just make sure this is the right size, because this particular one comes with an A3085C. This particular truck has the high-capacity air cleaner option. K47, I believe, is the RPO. And so what we're really going to want on there is the correct high capacity air filter. Here's the A3181C, which is just the GM version of that, with the one that came with the housing being the AC Delco Gold version. They're both the same filter. All right, so that's just the different numbers for you there, right? So A3181C versus an A3085C. And whether it's a 2284-5992 or that bottom number 1590-8915. Look on the side here. So the paper's just a little bit thicker, I think, is the difference on here as far as that. But they are two different numbers for the same size housing. All right. So now we're just going to put this guy back in the way we took him out. All right, guys, so we're ready to put this guy in there. We've got it all cleaned up. What we're going to do to help us along is I'm going to put a little bit of spray silicone inside of these rubber grommets just to help slide her in. I like to use silicone rather than anything that's petroleum-based so that it doesn't damage the rubber. Now, this one on the back is like a Christmas tree-type connector. The rubber piece is actually what slides into the housing. The piece that pops into this groove is just a Christmas tree connector. So we don't have to do anything with that. We just wanted that silicone for these two prongs to go into those guys. Yeah, let's try coming this way. There we go. All right. Just trying to get past all the lines, AC lines that are obstructing us here. There we go. All right, now we want to line up these grommets. Kind of do it by feel. So there's one. There's the other one. As soon as you feel like you get them in the right place, 
push it down. And I tell you, man, they are tough, tough, tough to get in there. And what we might do is we might just use a small mallet, rubber mallet. Yeah, what we're going to have to do is try to use a small mallet to get that in there. Just a little bit of extra persuasion on these guys. that one. There's that one. I think we got this guy in the back. I'm not sure. I think he went in. What we're going to do is we're going to go over here and he's right there. I'm just going to give him a tap just to make sure with a rubber mallet. Make sure it's secure and doesn't rattle or anything like that. All right, there we go. Now we're going to get our filter, set it back in here, and then we're going to get a cover back on here, and then we'll deal with the emission sticker. All right, guys, one of the things you can do to verify that you've got this one in the back seated, I just got a, grabbed a flashlight, thought I would show you. If we zoom in here, we can see the top of that rubber grommet I was showing you earlier. And if we pull up on this, you notice how it's wanting to pull that grommet through the housing, right? That's how you know you've gotten that Christmas tree connector seated back in that slot. Otherwise, it wouldn't pull up like that. It's because it's connected. There's going to be some play on it, but you want to make sure that it's behaving like that or you haven't gotten it seated. All right, so now at this time we can put our air filter back in here. And we can grab our housing, cover, Now you're going to notice we're missing the airflow sensor. We're going to have to take that off of the original one. I'm just going to get this guy on first. This probably would have been another good candidate for some silicone spray just to make this go on a little easier. All right. Now we're going to put our screws back in. Now what I'm going to elect to do is I'm going to elect to use the original Torx screws. Just because my personal preference is to keep the vehicle the way it rolled off the assembly line. I guess that's just my restoration guy in me wanting to do that. So I'm going to pop these in here. Now for the ones we're missing, I'll show you the part number for that. I think I laid one of those down here on the ground somewhere. There it is. So the part number on these special bolts is 1161. It's kind of hard to read here. 1161 1199. Right? So 1161 1199. That would be the part number. And I'll put that down in the description as well. So let me get these bolts back in here and we'll come back and we'll move over the sensor and then we'll deal with the sticker. All right, guys, we need to remove this mass airflow sensor. We're going to take a T15 and transfer it over to the new housing. With this particular guy, you just want to make sure you don't touch the element inside. Don't spray it with any kind of cleaners unless they're rated for this particular type of sensor. It's very sensitive to certain kinds of solvents. Right. 
there's our sensor. So now we're going to go put it in the other one, and then I'll show you the torque values. All right, guys. We're just going to snug this up until we torque it into the new housing. Grab our connector and reinstall our retaining clip. All right, so let's take a look at what the torque values are. All right, guys, so for that mass airflow sensor and those two T15 screws, those get torqued to 13 inch pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench that goes that low, two finger snug only so you don't strip anything out. The next one we've got here is the four bolts or the four screws rather that hold the top of the air cleaner housing. Those guys get torqued to 27 inch pounds. And again, if you don't have a torque wrench, don't over tighten this. That's how the previous owner probably broke this in the first place. Two finger snug. We're dealing with metal into plastic here. And then the last, um, the last torque value will be for the clamp. So both of the clamps on either side of this air duct, we're interested in number one that connects to this housing. But regardless of which end it's on, they're both 35 inch pounds on those eight millimeter clamps. So again, if you don't have a torque wrench, don't over tighten it. All right, so now let's go deal with the emission sticker. All right, guys, so now we got to deal with the emission sticker so this thing can pass in the state that has that. I've cleaned this flat surface with uh, some 50% alcohol and water just to get it cleaned off anything that might affect the adhesive. So I'm going to go with a replacement sticker. You can try to remove the original one, but understand if it gets damaged, and it's kind of like removing one of these stickers on a license plate, then you'll still fail the inspection depending on the shop in that state because it'll be a tampered with sticker or a damaged sticker. So it's cheap enough just to replace it. You go to GM and order one. It'll come in a package like this. You know, it says parts enclosed in a little envelope. It'll be like a little thing like this in there. If we just focus in, the part number right here is 1935-4745 from AC Delco. And since it's an emission part, they keep it around longer than most parts, and you just reorder it based on the VIN, and you'll get a new one, and it'll come in something like this. Again, the VIN's covered up for privacy of the owner, but we basically just have a brand new sticker to stick on here and fix this problem. So I'm going to get this sticker affixed, and that'll be the end of this job. I hope this helped you out. If you got any questions or comments, leave them below and I'll try to help. If you found this video useful or it taught you something or saved you some money, pay it forward and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.